And will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God is funny. Did you know? Truly. I mean, how does it work out so well that the scripture that falls on Helen McCready's Celebration Sunday is, wait for it, the Ascension? Now, I know that thankfully Helen won't be lifted up and seated at the right hand of God come May 31st, but it is true and is the work for us this morning to face that truth that Helen, church administrator extraordinaire for the last 23 years, will not be with us in much the same way after today. So we find ourselves a bit like the disciples, wandering around asking, where did she go? Where, what about the communion bread? Did anyone order the communion bread and where do we keep those offering baskets anyway? But Jesus knew for his ministry to really take hold, he had to rely on the help of others, disciples who could be counted on to do the day-to-day -day administration work that keeps the mission rolling forward. The scripture passage that David just read ends with a listing of the people who were still on the ground looking heavenward as Jesus ascended. It names the usual cast of characters, Peter, and John, and James, and Andrew, and then ends with the exciting line, together with certain women. <laughs> oh, those certain women. I wish that their names sprang to mind as easily as Peter and John, but it is rare that we lift up their work for the cause, let alone their names. So today, that's what we're going to do. From the beginning, Jewish women disciples, including Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna, had accompanied Jesus during his ministry and supported him out of their own means. He spoke to women both in public and in private, and indeed he learned from them. According to one story, an unnamed Gentile woman taught Jesus that the ministry of God is not limited to particular groups and persons, but belongs to all who have faith. A Jewish woman honored him with extraordinary hospitality by washing his feet with perfume. Jesus was a frequent visitor in the home of Mary and Martha and was in the habit of teaching and eating with both women and men. When Jesus was arrested, women remained firm even when his male disciples are said to have fled and they accompanied him all the way to the foot of the cross. It was women who were reported as the first witnesses of the resurrection, chief among them again, Mary Magdalene. Although the details of these gospel stories may sometimes be questioned in general, they reflect the prominent historical roles that women played in Jesus' ministry as his disciples. The letters of Paul, dated to the middle of the first century, and his casual greetings to acquaintances offers fascinating and solid information about many Jewish and Gentile women who were prominent in the early Jesus movement. Paul's letters also often offer some important glimpses into the inner workings of ancient Christian churches. These groups did not own church buildings, but met in homes no doubt in, due in part to the fact that Christianity was not legal in the Roman world of its day, and in part because of the enormous expense. Such homes were a domain in which women played key roles. It is not surprising then to see women taking leadership in these early house churches. Phoebe. Phoebe was a deacon in the church at Sencrie, near Corinth, in the mid-first century. She used her gifts of hospitality to welcome, encourage, and provide for the early followers of Jesus in her area. She also helped to finance the mission work of the apostles. Paul told his followers to respect her like a saint and help her in any way she needed. 
Paul also trusted her to deliver his important letter to the Romans. And in introducing her in the opening of the letter, he lists six women leaders in the Roman church, Priscilla, Mary, Junia, Tryphenia, Trephosa, and Persis, and asks that they take good care of her. He knows that they will show hospitality, one of the most ancient and most important virtue or, virtues of a follower of Jesus from Abraham who welcomed God's angels, to an unnamed woman who washed Jesus' feet, to Phoebe who cared for a houseful, a fledgling community, we see the importance of caring for others as central to our faith. When we practice the skills of caring for others, serving others out of love, we do the physical work that helps to grow our hearts. This is a nurturing skill, an encouraging skill, that all people have the ability to share. Another woman who led a house church much like Phoebe's was Lydia. When Paul and Silas arrived in Macedonia, they visited a prayer gathering led by Lydia. Lydia was a Greek woman who sold expensive purple cloth. She also believed in God. When she heard Paul speaking to the women gathered in her home, God opened her heart to truly hear the message of good news. She was so inspired by the teachings about Jesus and the power of God's grace that she and her family were immediately baptized. After she and her household were baptized, they begged Paul and Silas to stay with them. She fed them and gave them a safe place to rest. Again, Lydia showed hospitality, but more than that, she welcomed strangers, others, even outlaws, and in doing so, stood against the social conventions of that day. In this move of welcoming these strangers, she caused social and cultural barriers to crumble, and this corner of the Roman Empire was changed, transformed by God's love. But Lydia's story gives us another important lesson about discipleship. The passage says that God opened Lydia's heart to receive the good news. It's clear in her story that God's spirit falls upon, fills, and moves human beings as and when God wills. The disciple Lydia shows us that direct access to God is available to every person regardless of gender, nation, religion, any barrier that society might try to erect crumbles when the spirit moves the heart. God loves all of us as children, and God's wisdom and inspiration is available to everyone. In fact, Lydia broke a few more barriers as Paul goes on to say that he was blessed to hear Lydia preach the good news not only can the Holy Spirit inspire anyone to receive the good news, God's Spirit can inspire anyone to share the good news. Growing in faith with others should be about both deep listening and about sharing our own stories and the wisdom that God puts in our hearts. Thank you, Helen, for sharing your story with us. Thank you for sharing your good news. These women, founders of the early church, showed hospitality and welcome. They cared for others because they understood the importance of showing God's love through their lived example. Their lives are a testament to the deep commitment of our faith that God can move the heart of any person and inspire everyone, regardless of the barriers humankind sometimes puts up in this world. Each of these women persevered through tough times, and each used their God-given skills and shared their stories to help nurture others in the faith. We stand on their shoulders, these encouragers of the faith. May we be inspired by their work and witness to become nurturers and encouragers and builders of God's kingdom as well. Amen.